Hi there, great to be with you again. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the story of the wedding at Cana in Galilee in John's Gospel, John chapter 2, over the next few days. John's Gospel, I think is worth understanding, was written to show that Jesus is the Son of God and that believers might have eternal life in him. That's the whole point of his writing. Jesus writes, or John rather, writes about seven miracles that culminate in the raising of Lazarus from the dead. We've already looked at a couple of those. We've looked at the healing at the man in uh, the pool in Bethesda, and we've seen Jesus walking on water. Today we come to this wedding. We'll see something different. The first three verses say this. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother turned to him and said, they have no more wine. Now these three verses just set the background for the event. The scene is set on a, a wedding that was being held for an unnamed couple. There are some ancient documents that exist that suggest that it was John who was getting married and that his mother was Salome, who was the sister of Mary. Um, although that information isn't corroborated anywhere else in the Gospels, it just exists uh, as an ancient text. Having said that, it does explain the level of authority that Mary seems to have had um, uh, at this wedding. And it also explains how it was that John was able to write about the details that went on uh, in this account. Well, weddings were big events. They took place over a period of days with a feast and a ceremony and a very circuitous parade through the town so that everyone could see the, the newlyweds and, and wish them well. And then they would live like king and queen for about a week, they dressed like royalty, they'd keep an open house, they'd welcome everybody who stopped by. And in a world where poverty was so common, a wedding was a major source of joyous celebration. It brought family and community together. And wine was a significant part of the wedding feast. The rabbis used to say, without wine there is no joy. And it wasn't that people drank so much that they got drunk, because that was considered disgraceful. In fact, most of the time, the wine was watered down, three parts to two with water, um, before it was even consumed. But the fact that the wine had run out was a major problem. It was embarrassing because hospitality is a sacred duty in Israel, and it would have been humiliating for the bride and groom to have run out. But I want you to understand something really significant here. This isn't just a story about a wedding where Jesus did something clever with wine. Did you notice at the start that phrase, on the third day a wedding took place? Two things are happening. This account is a part of a series of events that took place. Jesus found his first few disciples and then continued on to go to this wedding. But it's also a very prophetic image of the celebration that takes place in heaven at the end of the death and resurrection of Jesus. The wedding of the Lamb of God that you read about in Revelation, where Jesus is shown as the bridegroom and the church that you and I are seen as the bride. Watch with me as this story unfolds over the next couple of days. and See how John gives us this prophetic image of the events that would take place during and after the life of Jesus and what they mean for us as his disciples. May we pray? Lord Jesus, uh, as we unpack this story, I pray that you would reveal more of yourself to us and more of your purposes for us. Show us through this account, Lord, the wonders of heaven and the measure of the unending blessings that you have to pour out upon us. Help us to see you in all your glory and help us, Lord, to look forward to that day when we will see you and be with you in heaven. We ask in your precious name. Amen. Have a great day.